So, Tom, yes. I wanted to share with you, uh, I don't think you've heard this. It's, a lot of people will have heard this. It's kind of a fun little puzzle about repeated exponentiation. But okay. you open this can of worms, and it can get as deep as you want. We'll just do things <laughs> kind of quickly right now. All right. Um, but let's say I take x to the power of x to the power of x to the power of x, and I go on and on and on and on. Yeah. Right? Um, if I just do this forever, and I say I want to find some value of x so that this is equal to 2, Okay. Right? Um, how, would, how might you go about finding an answer to something like this? Um, I feel like it wouldn't be helpful to move x's around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you'd find so yourself doing something like, oh, yeah. all we have to do is take roots. We're just going to take yeah, a root of that's... the right side yeah. and then a root of the second side. What's the root that we take? Oh, it's, the, yeah, <laughs> it's so the, the same that's thing. That's not going to be helpful. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, and I'll just do that a bunch until you're like, <laughs> oh, but no. Um, so in that case, I'm having an inkling. It's something to do with the fact that it goes on and on and on and on. Yeah. Is, is that it? I feel like the fact that it's... So we're assuming here that it is infinite, right? Infinite. So that, to me, that's hinting at something. That's going to play a role. Classic problem-solving uh, strategy when you have this sort of infinite thing is to leverage self-similarity, where inside the expression is a copy of itself, gotcha. which depends yeah. on the infinity. Which is kind of fun, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the whole property of infinity is that if you add one, you don't change size, mm -hmm. in some sense, right? You're an infinite set, it means if you add one, you can still have a one-to-one -one correspondence with yourself. Yes. Um, yes. So you leverage this idea. Mm -hmm. And what that means is uh, we have a copy of the original and say, oh, well, we know what that has to be. It's got to be two. So x, x squared, squared two. equals two, <laughs> which means uh, x is going to be the square root of two, right? Yeah, okay. Which seems lovely and beautiful, mm -hmm. right? Until I ask you a similar question, <laughs> which is, we're going to solve the same equation, x, 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 we just keep going on and on, I'm going to kill that fly for you, <laughs> um, equals 4. So how would you proceed here? I'm going to guess that we're going to try and use the same kind of method. Great. Right. Uh, so what's the next step? So then it's going to be x to the 4 is equal to 4. Mm -hmm. And so then we're going to want to take fourth roots. Mm -hmm. So that's going to give us back to root two again. Right. So that doesn't seem to make sense. Because what it seems to say <laughs> is if we take yeah. root two to its own power, to its own power, on yeah. and on and on and on, that that equals two, right? Yes. But it also seems to say that that equals four. <laughs> so I've probably done something I'm not allowed to do. Right. So when you're dealing with an infinite process like this, uh, it's important to be very clear on exactly what you mean. Yeah. Uh, one way that you might think about this is, let's say we've got the function f of x is equal to the square root of 2 to the x, okay? Yeah. This is like 1.414 to, to itself or something. Yeah. And what you do is you start with a seed of 1, and then you run it through f, and you'll get root 2. Yeah. And then you run it through f again, and that's root 2 to the power root 2. And if you keep going on, you're saying what we have is a certain infinite sequence. And often when people see dot, 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 and then equal, we're meant to assume that the sequence approaches something. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So maybe let's just verify that experimentally. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seems a good idea, yeah. So I can pull up some Python. just to. All right, so we're going to define a to be the square root of 2. Yep. All right, so that's what it looks like. And now I'm going to define um, f of x to be a to the power x. Yep. Yep. So if I take f of 1, uh, oh, we've got to return that. Return a to the power x. Great. So f of 1 should be the square root of 2. Good. f of f of 1 should be something else. Yes. So what we could do is say we're going to start with... Um, uh, let's call it c, is equal to 1, and then we're going to set c equal to f of c, and then print it out, right? And presumably, as I repeat this process over and over, we'll get something, kind of keep repeating, maybe get tired and write a for loop. <laughs> I don't know, 100. Um, let's just keep doing this. c is equal to f of c, and then I want to print out what it is. And it looks actually pretty good, right? It does, yeah. Like we've I'm got, seeing um, a bunch of 1.999s, uh, and it gets really close to two. two. I think it's slightly above two. Yeah, at this point, <laughs> yeah, it might be numerical error, yeah, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. computers can't know um, 
irrational numbers perfectly. Yeah. Um, so interesting. It seems like the, the the empirical answer is two, but not four. Yeah. So our logic got us the right answer, but it can't be completely for the right reason because the same logic applies to that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Aside from finding the exact answer to this, it's a little interesting that it converged at all. Yeah. Because <laughs> right, I mean, here let's just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's just do this with a, a different value, like um, if I take c equal to 2, and then c is going to be 2 to the power of whatever c already is, right? And maybe we'll do that and then print c, right? It's like we get 16, and then we'll take 2 to the power of that, which is 65536, right? And then we take very, 2 to very the power big, of that. Very, very quick. Yeah, wow. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Actually... This wow. is what I love about Python, right? That it doesn't care about the size of your interface. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that can take a lot of space. So the next step, right, which is just like the fifth step yeah. or whatever, is two to the power of this wall of Which I don't, I don't want to know the answer to that. Right. So it explodes super quickly, and yet square root of two, it seemed to converge, right? Mm -hmm. So we could play this game, actually. Um, like, what if it was 1.5, right? What if we were taking, we start C at one, and then we take C equals 1.5 to the power of C. And look at what it is, right? So we first get 1.5, then 1.8, 2.1, and we kind of keep doing this, and we can do the four. So they're certainly getting bigger, but yeah, it's whether or not they're going to go to infinity, I guess. Yeah. Um, there we go. Result too large. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, at some point we're taking 1.5 yeah, to this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So 1.5 blows up, right? And yet square root of two, which is 1.41, didn't blow up. That's perfect. Right? <laughs> um, so, f what you should ask is, when does it blow up and when does it yeah. not? Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. Um, which is kind of, this is very visual to think about, where, uh, you know about cobweb diagrams, yeah? I do, yes, yes. yes. I teach them in math biology. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Because so, yeah. Yeah, when you have like an iterative repeated process, exactly. le like a yeah. population who, where the rule for going from one phase to another is the same, you're just kind of yeah, repeating yeah, it. Um, so, yeah, see if it blows up or see if it converges to a stable population number. It's exactly what we do. So let's say this is x. I'm going to draw the line y equals x, right? Yep. And then let's say we have some kind of exponential curve that looks like a to the x, right? Yes. So when we want to play this process of we've got a0, no, I shouldn't call it a0, c0 is equal to 1, and then c1 is equal to f of c0. Yeah. And we sort of repeat that. We're feeding it into itself, f of c1, on and on. Um, the way we could think about this is, okay, uh, our first value is an input of 1 sitting here. Yep. So that's c0. So the output is wherever it is on that graph, right? Mm -hmm. But the output right now is represented with a y value. So yep. if we want to turn that into an input, we say... What is the point where we can see where the x value is the same as this y value? So we hop over to the graph yeah. where y equals x, yeah. right? And that gets us here. So that kind of represents where c1 is. And, you want and then we apply the function again. Yes, exactly. We land on the graph. Yeah. And then again, we say, oh, let's make that our input value. So we have to make it x. And I actually think cobweb diagrams are a slightly awkward way to think about iteration sometimes, but can be very helpful. Yeah. Um, no, it's in this context, yeah, now it just, it goes it's up. It's going to go up, and you're not going to get, it's right. going to go to infinity, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but some exponential curves will look a little bit different. Okay, so an exponential curve passes through one. This will be here. And let's say it, we're going to have it go and like gently come in and then out. So it, it's something that's yeah. like just barely gotten into touching it. So when we start at uh, one, and we go up to the graph. Okay, great, great. Then we cobweb over here. And then go up and over and up and over. And, then you're gonna get and we approach you're gonna wherever it intersects. Yeah. Great, that makes sense. Um, so this would be like two. Uh, in the case we were looking at here. Oh, yeah, yeah exactly. Two, right. two, Evidently, right. when we do root two. So, so let's it's actually just. Towards. Let's straight up do this. Um, I'll go back to my computer, which I've got a little Desmos situation okay. going on here, um, where let's say a is equal to square root of two. Okay? Yeah. Awesome. So in this context, I have this a looks graph. Like last picture, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we've got a graph that yep. is uh, uh, square root of two to the power x, mm -hmm. and it actually looks like they intersect right at two. Yeah. Which we know is true, right? Because square root of two to the power two is that. Yes. Um, so what's a little bit more fun is if we try different values of a, 
right? So add a slider for a. And in that context, let me make this range from 1 up to 3. Sometimes it doesn't hit, yep. and that's where we know things are going to blow up. And then sometimes it does, mm -hmm. right? Oh. And, and if we take a look, notice that, remember, where it converges gonna, is going to be where they intersect, yep. right? So here that intersection seems to happen a little above 2, mm -hmm. but by the time it separates, right, it's separating here, that intersection never got as high as 4. No. Yeah, so yeah, there yeah. doesn't even exist an x such that this repeated process will land you on 4. Instead, it's like, I converge to something a little above 2, yeah. and then, without passing through, without passing go, right, <laughs> go straight to jail, the, the jail of divergence to infinity, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> that seems to be what happens. Let's figure out what value of a yes. this is, right? Well, that's what I want to know. Okay. As, I'm, as I'm watching this, I'm like, we, I want to, like, you've just shown that, that for those, you know, we know it works for root 2, 1.4-ish. Mm -hmm. If we go to, like, 1.5, it's too big, so, like, What's that value in between if it's... Because it seemed to be a little bit more than root 2. So there's nothing... Yeah. So It looks like it's, what, 1.45-ish. Yeah. That seems to be the right yeah. neighborhood. Um, I actually did not really think this through before coming here today, but I think we can solve it together because yeah, we we're, totally we're math this. folks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably. So we've got y equals x. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And over here we've got um, a to the x. Yeah. So uh, if their tangents are going to be equal to each other... Uh, then we know that the derivative of a to the x is equal to the natural log of a times a to the x. Uh, and so we're looking for a point x naught so that this is equal to 1 because its slope has to be 1. Yes. All right, so ln of a times a to the x naught has to equal... 1. Mm -hmm. We don't know what a is. We also don't know what x naught is. Yes. We, need, we need a second equation, right? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. W which is that we're sitting on the line y equals x, right? So mm -hmm. it's got to be the case that x naught um, They're intersecting as well, aren't they? Whereas the gradients, they have to be the same intersection point. Yeah, exactly. So their gradients uh, are equal, and so therefore x naught must equal a to the x naught. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Must equal a to the x naught. Great. Mm. Then you take that, put that into here. Okay, great, great. So now we know that x naught is x naught is equal to a no no not a e to the e to the x naught, x naught to the negative one all to the power of x naught all to the power of x naught. Great. Um, which is good. So they multiply on the end there. So that's x naught is e oh so x naught is equal to e. Okay, great, great, great. So a <laughs> is go. e to the power of 1 over e, Yeah. Um, which, let's just go ahead and check that if we take um, e to the power of 1 over e, yeah, okay, so that's 1.44, yeah. which seems to be what we're seeing on the graph around there. Awesome. So yeah. that's the cutoff. And we could, uh, this is one, e is one over. there's going to be a lower bound too, right? Which it, because there should be multiple solutions to this um, that will give us like the other end for our range of convergence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, first of all, just to give an indication of what what it would mean. Yeah. Um, it's if what would it mean actually? Um, so, so the idea being that we need this intersection. Yeah, we need that and intersection. So as we make a sufficiently small. Except it's not just that we need them to intersect at some point. It's got to be that the slope of uh, the slope of our a to the x graph is less than 1, so that when we do our cobwebbing, we go towards ah, course, the intersection yes. and not away from it. That's also true. Um, right, I see. But then if that slope was... Uh, let's see. So if that slope was too big, um, or if we're coming at it from the other direction, then it's too small. Yeah. We would cobweb away from it. Yes. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I'd be looking for the so point where... There's a limiting case there, yeah. Okay. Because let's say we've got... Um, on some graph, really zoomed in, this is what like a to the x looks like as it passes through um, y equals x. And then when we're cobwebbing, we'll like start here and then go to the right and then come down and then go until we hit it. Yeah, and then, and then go up. You and have then to it's come a question inside. of, yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, got to yeah, come yeah. up. Yeah. Um, so as soon as a to the x as a graph 
is a little too steep, then it'll diverge away, right? So I think, I think we'd be looking for when it's intersecting with a curve and also has a slope of negative one. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that, so in the same way that here we're solving for when the slope is one, the we substitute the negative, negative one. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you can see the lower bound on it, which is fun. It is fun. I agree. <laughs> uh, and the last thing I'd leave someone with is to Google tetration fractal. Okay. Because yeah. you can ask, okay, we're doing this on the real number line. W which complex numbers for A will make this process converge versus diverge? Mm. And very interesting visual answer, <laughs> right? Um, but as, as, as a solution to um, the original puzzle on why does it, why does it seem to be two and four simultaneously? Yeah. The, the mere assumption that there even exists an x such that this process could yield 4 is wrong. Yes, right? that was the problem. To solve an equation, you have to know that the equation has a solution. <laughs> right? Very true, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I got for you. That was awesome. No, that was great. Thank you so much.